All right, welcome everyone to your first day of distance learning um, for science. We are actually going to be just starting fresh in a new unit um, called energy. So I will be touching on a couple things from last unit, but not very much. Um, just some basics. So um, bear with us here as we as we work through this um, new interesting format. So I'm going to put it in present mode here. So as you can see, I've got a couple of random images because energy can come in so many different forms, all of which we'll learn how to categorize. A simple definition of energy is the ability to do work. Work is uh, defined as a transfer of energy. And, uh, you know, you might recall if, if you covered this, um, you know, how to calculate work. It's not a big deal if you didn't, but I just wanted to, to show you something here. Um, when we lift a book up and say store it on, on top of a shelf that's two meters up, we're actually doing work. And in doing that work, we're transferring energy, we're expending energy. When we do that, um, the energy that the person used to do the work is actually going to be stored in that book because it's elevated. We actually learn about um, something called gravitational potential energy later on this week, and that's what this book is exhibiting. Um, but the question is, okay, if it's stored now that it's sitting up there, how do you get that energy back out? Well, you can just simply shove it off the shelf and we can convert that stored energy now to energy that's motion called kinetic energy. And that's today's topic, actually. Work and energy are both measured in the same unit, and that's a joule. Um, we write it as a capital J. And uh, this equation that you might have used before, some of you might not have gotten this far, but work is force times distance, uh, ends up in joules. And the equation you're going to learn today also is measured in joules. And by the way, if you wanted to do this calculation, um, we'd multiply the force, three newtons, uh, by the distance it travels. And those, those two, by the way, have to be in the same plane of direction. And, and we have that in this situation. It's lifted up, it moves up. And so multiplying that would give us six joules. Six joules of work done, six joules of energy um, stored now in that book. So we've got lots of different forms of energy, many different categories, some of which um, will even have a specific unit left. Um, for example, electrical energy, we're going to look at electricity down the road. Um, we'll look at waves, and so electromagnetic energy falls under that category too. Uh, but many, some of these we've actually talked about before, chemical bonds, uh, nuclear reactions, um, and, and so forth. But all these forms of energy that you'll learn about uh, later on in the weeks to come can be categorized as two things. It's either kinetic energy, or potential energy. Kinetic energy is anything where work is done, in other words, where motion is actually happening. And so you can see all these different types here, mechanical, thermal, electrical, etc., are considered kinetic energy sources, and potential energy, um, which is stored energy, can be these types. Uh, this will be, this potential talk will be um, later on in the week, and today we're going to be focusing more on the kinetic side. So to define that, kinetic energy, written as Ke, is energy due to motion. It depends on two variables, the mass of the object and the speed it's traveling. If you have a more massive object, you're going to have more kinetic energy. In fact, it's a direct proportion. If you have a higher speed, you're also going to have more kinetic energy. It's going to be actually directly proportional to the square of the velocity. In other words, velocity is a big deal in these problems. It's a big determine, determiner of um, the kinetic energy of, of the object. So sometimes, you know, you might have a question like, okay, how can a tiny, tiny object like a little bullet still have a lot of kinetic energy? It's possible because even though the mass is really small, like a very small fraction of a kilogram, um, because they typically travel so fast, Velocity is squared in the equation, and so it's going to have actually a pretty decent kinetic energy. So just to kind of break that down further, if you had two objects, call them A and B, moving at the same speed, object A, let's say it has twice the mass of object B. What would result is object A would have twice the kinetic energy because it's a direct proportion with mass. But let's say those same two objects, A and B, now have the same mass but object A is moving at twice the speed of object B. Object A would have four times more kinetic energy because velocity is squared in the equation. 
And if you recall in the forces unit, we learned about the universal law of gravitation. We'd often ask you, okay, which one is the bigger factor? Distance between objects or the mass of the objects in determining the force of gravity? Really, it was distance simply because it was squared in the equation. It had the bigger impact. Well, the same is true here. So velocity being squared plays a larger role. The equation is kinetic energy is equal to 1 half times m times v squared. Mass is in kilograms. Velocity is in meters per second. And the units are always going to be measured in joules. I want to remind you that when you use this equation, remember your order of operations. Velocity has to be squared first before you do any of the other multiplying. And so we'll practice that here. So a first sample problem says, let's say you've got a 70 kilogram man who's walking at a speed of two meters per second. What is his kinetic energy? So if this is our base equation, um, we just need to plug in some numbers here. Um, we've got one half, here's his mass, and we need to square two meters per second because that is his velocity. And I apologize, this two just doesn't really look like a superscript, but it is supposed to be an, an exponent here. So as I said before, always square your velocity before you do anything else. And so I've done that in this step here. Two times two lands me at four. It's supposed to be meters squared per second squared, but typing that is kind of ugly sometimes. Um, but we're going to multiply that squared velocity by the mass. And remember, um, we can divide everything by two or multiply by a half. It's the same result. You should end up with 140 joules of kinetic energy for this man walking. Okay. Now moving on to a more difficult problem. Um, if you're not just asked to just solve for kinetic energy, but rather maybe the speed, it is more algebra. A 50 kilogram track star has a kinetic energy of 2,500 joules as he sprints down the track. How fast is he running? Well, if this is our base equation, we need to get V all by itself. And so the first step would be to get rid of this half. If we multiply both sides of the equation by the number two, that will get rid of that half. And so we're just left over in this step. Two times kinetic energy is equal to MV squared. But again, we're aiming to get velocity by itself. So the next step would be to divide both sides of the equation by m for mass. And in doing so, we're landing at this step here. Getting closer to getting velocity by itself, but not quite there yet. So 2 times kinetic energy divided by the mass is equal to velocity squared. Now some of you are familiar with this next step, but some of you this might be new. To get velocity by itself when it's squared, we need to take the square root of both sides of the equation. In doing so, finally, we've got V isolated, and we've got kind of an ugly looking equation here, the square root of all of this. All we have to do is just carefully plug in those numbers. So I've got two times my kinetic energy from the problem divided by his mass listed in the problem. And what you end up here in this section you should get 100, and the square root of 100 is our answer. So the square root of 100 is 10 meters per second because we're looking for a velocity, and those are my velocity units. And if you're curious if that's even reasonable, um, I looked up, you know, what, what would that be in miles per hour? It says 22.4 miles per hour. Again, that didn't mean that much to me if, if that was even realistic. So I looked up, you know, a famous sprinter, Usain Bolt. What's his top speed and I found it to be 12.27 meters per second which is 27.4 miles per hour so this runner in the problem is actually pretty good but not quite as good as Usain Bolt of course. So in this next uh, portion I want you to actually work through these on your own on paper um, don't just plug it into your calculator and think ah yeah I got it but put it down do the steps, um, show your equation, manipulate the equation if necessary, and include the units in your answer. Remember, kinetic energy is always measured in joules. But I've got three problems here, one of which you will have to do that manipulation for velocity, but the other two are a little bit more straightforward. What I want you to do right now is pause me and work through these on your own, and when you resume, I'll go through the answers. So pause me and work through it on your own. Go. Okay, so let's go through some solutions here.
The first one had a car moving at a speed of 30 meters per second. You had to calculate the kinetic energy in both joules and kilojoules. And so plugging in your numbers, you'd get one half times the mass here in kilograms times velocity squared. Remember to square your velocity first. And that lands me at 900 meters squared per second, or meters squared, sorry, there should be a slash here, per second squared. In fact, maybe I'll fix that right now. Ah, forgive me. I mentioned I don't like putting it in here because it is so awkward to type, but okay, it's in there. Um, so I squared velocity first, landing me at 900. I'm going to multiply it by the mass. And after that, I'm going to divide everything by two or multiply it by a half, either way. And so you'd land at 540,000 joules. And I also asked you to list it in kilojoules. So you just simply need to move it three spots to the left, the decimal place, um, to land at 540 kilojoules. The next one asks for the speed, I think, of a cheetah, giving you the kinetic energy and the mass. And so you can go back to this to, you know, how did we get to that equation right here if you want to see those steps. Um, but we would get, this is our final equation. So 2 times his kinetic energy, which I think was 8,000, divide by his mass of 40. And you need to take the square root of that number. Um, square root of 400, I believe, is what it should be, um, lands us at 20 meters per second. So that sheet is going pretty fast. The last one there, you're just solving for kinetic energy again. The only monkey wrench I threw at you is that I listed the mass in grams, but we always need to be in kilograms. So the first step is to move that decimal place over three spots to make sure that you have the correct mass in kilograms. And from there, it's just the same as before. Square your velocity first. Oops, there again, I, I need that division sign there, forgive me. Um, multiply by the mass and then divide everything by two. And you should get a decimal. You can round that decimal to 15.6 joules. So check your work. Um, see where you might have made a misstep. I imagine some people forget to convert the mass. And then uh, just store this away for tomorrow. Today your only task was uh, to watch these notes, to take notes. Um, and uh, tomorrow we'll put this in practice more, doing some problems and some, uh, some more applied questions. So thank you for watching, and um, we'll see you again tomorrow.